Today I've travelled to Stoke-on-Trent. I'm here at Fletcher Moorland. The company recently purchased their first vertical machining centre and it was a Fanuc Robo drill. Fletcher Moorland is a business started by my grandfather in 1946, firstly doing subcontract electric motor repairs. And that really is the core of the business today. Three generations later and I'm running the business, took over from my father beforehand. And we still repair electric motors, air handling units, pumps, fans, gearboxes. We also have an electronic section where industrial electronic repairs such as servo drives, inverters and PLCs and with servo motors too. So we're, we're a repair company primarily. Companies uh, use us all over the country for repair to their goods when they're in a breakdown situation. They come here, we fix them and send them back. But it's moved on a little since then with machining centres and condition monitoring techniques that we're now putting out to the market. And you've recently purchased, Matthew, a robo-drill from Fanuc. What was the reason behind the business's decision? We have, and we had requests from customers to make parts certain bits that they couldn't get made or it was on long deliveries. And we've got m traditional machine centres here and it would take us too long to do that or we'd have to subcontract the work. So we made the decision to bring this in-house and the Fanuc Robo Drill is ideal for what we want with our customers for parts that we can make pretty quickly and get them to them. I think Fanuc is uh, such a well-known brand. We have a relationship with Fanuc knowing a number of the people there and we repair Fanuc equipment here in our electronics and servo section so it naturally seemed to be a good fit. Matthew, you were brought into the business to primarily operate and run this Fanuc Robo Drill. Uh, can you tell us about your opinion thus far? The, the, the Robo Drill is an amazing machine. It allows you to increase your productivity time and which allows you to produce more parts and more efficiently. How does it do that? Because you've got experience with machining centres before. What are the aspects of the machine that make it more productive? It's the speed it moves when it's not actually cutting. That's where it generates a lot more speed and then it allows you to move around the parts a lot quicker. And what sort of materials are you cutting on the machine? Uh, are you doing some harder uh, components as well as the soft aluminiums? Uh, majority of the time we do aluminium and soft steel, but the machine will actually do the harder steels like the D2 tool steel. And we have actually done a few parts with it and it runs absolutely fine as if it was doing solid steels or the softer steels. Even, if, even though the fact you've got a BT30 tool changer here, yes. You don't still get any vibration or no. increased tool wear on those harder materials? No, there's, there's no vibration. It's all about adjusting your speeds and feeds to suit what material that you have within. doesn't matter how big the machine is. It can be a small machine or a big machine. As long as you get your speeds and your feeds right, it runs just as well on small or large machines. We look at this as a high power spindle, Matthew, but what, what sort of speed does it operate at? It, the maximum operating speed is 10,000 RPM. And a lot of the stuff you do is reverse engineering as well, isn't it? So how, yes. how do, you go, do you use a cam, so, cam solution in order to do that? We have a cam software called Mastercam, and we also have two CMM machines. And when you do the reverse engineering, how, how, how do you do it? Do you measure the part and then just, can you talk us through what happens? Yeah, when we have a, a customer will ask us to re-engineer a part, and what we tend to do is we, we sit down, we measure the part, and then we actually put it onto a master cam system by drawing it and then adding all the tools to it and then it'll generate the program for the robo drill. And how reliable is the end product that comes out of that? Do you find that what you ask it to do it actually does? Yes, with very very tight tolerances 0 0.001, it's very good. And I can see that at the rear of the machine is where the swarf would exit. Could you maybe give us a little bit more detail on that? Yes, it's, a, it's very good and there's a process in the machine where you can just add f uh, the coolant to it, flooding it all the time, so it's washing your, your, your parts away. So you never have to spend time with the machine not no, machining because no. you're cleaning? The cleaning time, no. It's the, the cleaning time's gone, the coolant washes it away. I would like you to summarise, if you could, in a sentence, Matthew, a few final words on this robo drill. It's a small, reliable machine and it's very compact which allows your production time to increase because you can get the stuff off a lot quicker. 
a success. It's in its very early days at the moment. We're still learning the machine. We employed a guy specifically to run this machine. But what I want it to do, I want it to do one-off, two-off, five-off batch parts for our customers, so small volumes but higher value. And it is a business case. We're putting the sales team on this to go out there for the customers to bring business into us. So I see this as our first investment in a machining centre and I'd like others to follow as the business grows.